From the Denver Broncos Media Center, welcome to Broncos Country Tonight. Welcome to Broncos Country tonight as we preview the Broncos versus Kansas City Chiefs game coming up this Sunday. Of course, the Chiefs have won 14 straight. They are a 12-win team. This is the proverbial David versus Goliath. So um, I, I guess to a certain extent, as we heard Jerry Rosberg talk about, they're going in to try to get a win. They're going in to snap this 14-game losing streak. But I think I want to start really more from I want to see a change in attitude from this team, from what we just saw against the L.A. Rams first and foremost. Well, yeah, and I think, you know, Kansas City should be scared. I don't care if they're the little boy with five stones getting ready. Wait, I'm being told we are not the Goliath in this one? <laughs> We're the David. Okay. Um <laughs> No, I yeah, yeah, I do want to see that. I want to see some fight. I want to see I want to see some guys that know that they're eliminated and still out there fighting anyway. I, I'd love to see a little rally around the interim head coach, um, you know, phenomenon. So much so that you get hot take radio talking about maybe we should name Jerry Rossberg the head coach. You know, like oh, I, that, coming. That's the kind of fight that I want. You know, it's coming. We're, we're, oh, we're absolutely. Gonna see, I know we're going to see it. Um, but you know, I, yeah, I, I want to see guys going out there and 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 showing the fans a product that they can look forward to next year. Um, I want to see a different Russell Wilson. I, I don't want to see I'm calm in the face of, of everything Russell Wilson. I want to see a Russell Wilson that's mad they don't get first downs. I want to see a Russell Wilson that's mad they didn't score. I want to see that. Uh, I want to see an offensive line that's that's back there picking the quarterback up and being, all right, we got you next. We, we, we let one bias. We got you next time. I want to see receivers that aren't complaining that they didn't get the football and saying and, and running over to Russ to the sideline and saying, hey, I was open on that play. Get me next time. Look at me coming off the hank. I'm going to be there, right? So I, that's what I want to see. I want to see collaboration, positivity, uh, and, and I want to see them building something for next season, showing on tape that, this fa- that these fans that who have invested a lot of their emotion, their time, and their money into seeing these guys play, uh, that – you know, that it's worth it for him. I think what's important when you're talking about Russell Wilson and his leadership, I think what's important here is to see if, if he, whether it's in this season or into next is willing to sort of reinvent himself. And and I think we, we talk about this all the time with coaches, right. And their leadership and how some coaches fit certain locker rooms different than others. Right. I mean, what bill Belichick's leadership style wouldn't play in necessarily every locker room, Mm. but again, he built a a culture up there in new England and he's been able to foster that through a lot of winning, a lot of success. And of course a, a hall of fame, if not the greatest quarterback of all time, certainly helped in all that process. But, but the point being of all that is, is Russell Wilson. I think his leadership style didn't always gel with some of the guys up in Seattle, but they made it work because they continued to win games. Well, now he's experienced losing at the professional level, uh, losing at a level I don't think he ever thought he'd experience in his life. And so I'd like to see him reinvent himself a little bit through this process and say, what's a better way for me, especially under the circumstances of just having your head, your head coach fired, what is a better way for me to lead this team going forward? Yeah, I, I think, you know, I think that needs to be first and foremost in his mind. I think he needs to kind of uh, say what went wrong for me, not just from a personal standpoint in terms of playing the game of football, but what went wrong with me from an interpersonal standpoint in terms of my relationships with my teammates. That last game, I was getting blasted, knocked to the turf. Guys were getting sacks on me that had played in the league for you know four or five seasons and didn't have a career sack. Um, and you know, I think, I think you need to say, okay, what is it that I need to do to repair these relationships? What do I need to do to humble myself before my teammates, uh, and, and still be their leader? And I think he needs to figure that out. And if he's able to figure that out, recapture that locker room, not that he's totally lost the locker room. No, no, I know. There are, you get the idea. Um, if, if he can recapture that locker room and, 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 and recapture the energy that they had before they started this season, I, th- I think you, you might could have something next year depending on who they bring in to, to coach this thing. You talked about the interim coach bump that we sometimes see in the NFL. And it is a phenomenon. It, it doesn't. Well, the Broncos experienced it last year when Rich Passaccia showed up here with the Las Vegas Raiders. We, John Gruden had been fired. You thought the team was in disarray. They show up on Mike Shanahan Day of all days here in Denver, and they beat the brakes off the Broncos. So this isn't me predicting the Broncos are going to beat the Kansas City Chiefs, but what is it about that phenomenon, that interim head coach bump? Why, why does that tend to sort of put your opponents off off guard a little bit? It's the, it's the same phenomenon that exists across multiple different uh, in, environments, and that is that you you close ranks. You rally around yourself. When you lose one of your own, you rally around yourselves. Hey, we are facing adversity together, and it kind of, re, in a lot of cases, can – uh, can rebuild esprit de corps amongst uh, uh, amongst people. Now it doesn't. That's not always the case. Sure. Um, but we've certainly seen it. You know, kind of at times where 
uh, fresh eyes bring a fresh energy and there's a whole rally around you know we got to close ranks rally around focus down on things and that reality uh, uh, hits home. We're certainly seeing Steve Wilkes play pretty well up there in uh, our coach very well up there in Carolina. Now, whether that's a testament to Steve Wilkes' ability to coach or simply the rally around the coach phenomenon or both, um, you know, you're seeing it there. Jeff Saturday got a little bit of a bump out of it, and then, you know, they kind of fell off a little. But, um, you know, I, I, Rich Passaccio last year, you already mentioned, I, th- I think that, you know, you, you, you just get a, a sense of people that, that – close ranks around the fact that there is a tragedy or that there is a, a any kind of, of issue that happens and that they can rally around and, and common cause. You know, we, we have common cause now. And it, it, it just causes guys to put aside other things and say, okay, we got to go out and accomplish the mission. The, the, one of the things that was dysfunctional here is no longer here. We've got to, we've got to buck up and, and move forward. What I'm, I'm intrigued by with that, again, not predicting the Broncos are going to beat the Kansas City. What I'm, what I'm sort of intrigued by with that is, is just the the idea that if the Broncos somehow could put themselves in position to win this game and what that could mean for next season, what it means for this offseason, and, and the belief that they're going to have in each other because this season has been a, been a disaster. They've got, the, they got the one win against the San Francisco 49ers. That's really the signature win of the entire season. That was a, was 11 to 10 mm-hmm. win right early on. Um, when, when Russ put together a great drive, the offense put together a great drive at the end of the game, but for the most part, it's a very forgettable game for the offense. So this, this game, you'd need more from the offense and, and to sort of flip things on its side from what we saw against the LA Rams, you do rally around the interim, you come out and, and you surprise the Kansas city chiefs who are probably mostly sleepwalking at this point into the, 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 the remaining parts of the season, knowing what their schedule is in front of them, knowing that they really have their eye on trying to get the number one seed if possible. I, I would sort of think that you could catch them by surprise. I think that's one of the things that tends to happen in the NFL. Again, the Broncos are going to have to put on a better product than what they did against the LA Rams. That was a game that was very winnable and they, they looked like they, they didn't deserve to play on the same field, to be honest. Yeah, and I think it starts with going back to the run game. I think it starts with going back to uh, letting those backs loose in that backfield and, and just pounding it to somebody. Be tough as nails. Make the Kansas City Chiefs regret that you're on their schedule before they have to go to the playoffs. Uh, make the make that defense give up. Uh, well, you know what? We don't need this one. We're we're you know we've got 12 wins. We don't need this one. Let's just pack it in and save it for the play. Make them do that. That's how you beat them. That's how you beat them down by having a better attitude, be a tougher, tough as nails. That's how you do it. And you know, I don't know if uh, 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 Steve Atwater would necessarily. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, I, I think Steve Steve would say the same thing. I think Steve would say, you know, you got to go out there, and be tough. You got to go out there, and be physical, and you got to show them that uh, that you want it more. And, and it's going to be a tough environment to do in Kansas City. Well, that's what we. I mean, we talked to Steve last night on uh, Broncos Country tonight, the radio show, and I asked him what he wants to see. Say, I want to see fight. Mm-hmm. I want to see these guys go out there and and play like the the name on the front of their chest matters to them. Like it, it matters to play for this team, to play for each other. And he's like, we didn't really see a lot of that against the Rams. They got, they got beat down and they got embarrassed on national television. And that, that has been a common occurrence over the course of the year. So listen, one win over the Kansas city chiefs won't change everything. But if you snap that streak, I mean, just live in that world for a minute, you snap that streak against the Kansas city chiefs and, and, and suddenly you're thinking about next year in terms of, well, that's not hanging over us. What else can we check off the box here? Mm-hmm. Let, let's, let's stop with losing seasons. Yeah. Let's try to, let's try to, let's try to put ourselves in position to make a run. Because the thing is a lot of the defensive players are going to be back with this team, yeah. right? A lot of the defensive players and, and, and the core of the offense, the quarterback, most of the wide receivers at this point, um, you're going to have a rebuild offensive line, certainly, but it just, you're thinking about like a lot of the guys that are going to be playing this game good a lot of them have a chance to come back next year and so if that that ends up being the case this 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 could be a bit of of a bump for them when it comes to what they look back on this season saying well it all didn't it, it was all pretty bad but guess what we got the one but we that we circled all along and guess what we did it in their house yeah i think there's a there's a sense of moral victory to that uh, but i think on, on a larger scale i think you just as a player you have to know that you can't put bad tape up now that's a good point everything too. Everything that you do is going right. to be reviewed. The new coaching Great staff point. that comes in is going to pop all this tape on, and they're going to say, "Man, this, I don't know if I want this guy. He's sitting there loafing end of the season. You know, he's not trying to make a play for me. I want guys that are excited. You know, want to make a play for me no matter what." Yeah, you got new coaching staff coming in. Right. You don't. You don't think they're going to take a look at uh, these final you know, games? Look at all of it. Yeah. And so I, I just tell you right now. I mean, that that's the thing. Don't be the guy that, that gives them a reason to say, "You know what? I'm going to go get my guy to put in here." Yeah. Well, we already talked about changes on the offensive line. There could be even more. If you are one of those players that that doesn't show out, 
Yeah. Right. So understand that. Yeah, you're absolutely right. There are, there are guys that are playing for not only jobs for this team, but jobs around the NFL. And that, that is not necessarily a guarantee. Mm-hmm. Um, and especially not a guarantee at the, the kind of money that you're hoping to make if you're a free agent and you're, you're hoping to be able to test after this. So um, I'm, I'm 100% with you. I think if nothing else, you know, play for yourself, play for your family, pay, play for the fact that you want to continue this, playing in this game. But certainly I think for the locker room, and we've been around these guys in the locker room, up, up to the last game, I, I felt very secure in saying they were playing very hard for each other. If nothing else, they were playing hard for each other. Last game was the first time that was really tested, so now you have to, you have to show something else. Yeah, I... I, I wholeheartedly agree i think you've got to put up uh not just personal tape like we talked about you got to put up tape you, you almost have to get to give the fans a little here as well you got to put up great tape of the fans because you got to get them reinvested you've got to get the there's a, such an apathy that is settled in that you've got to get them reinvested in next year and not just when your first loss happens next year oh here we go again you know attitude from the fan base all right for benjamin albright i'm ryan edwards thanks for watching broncos country tonight Stand up and salute in Denver, and you've got the world champions that live in your town.